And we'll have a break later where you can walk through the setup stuff. Um, so a little about me, my name is Brittany. I am a senior developer advocate at Contentful. I also am a front end lead for Women Who Code DC where I've taught workshops like this. I've done a Git and GitHub workshop that's really fun and I just like doing speaking. And then I don't have a tech background in education. I started as a nonprofit events planner doing conferences and then I want to make more money. So I started working at a law firm doing legal practice management. And then again, I wanted to make more money. So I started learning how to code and I was just teaching myself and I went to this random meetup. Um, this is in 2016. I went to meetup in 2017 in January, and it was intro to jQuery, which now I'm like, wow, why did they do that? Um, and I really liked, <laughs> I really liked the meetup. And I was, we were coding, we were doing like in the in the Chrome browser de uh, dev tools, the console, writing stuff in there. And I was like, oh, this is so hard. And looking back, it was not hard at all. And the guy teaching it was the CEO of a boot camp, Thinkful. And he's like, hey, you want to do the boot camp free trial? And I was like, OK, sure. So I started doing the boot camp, and they didn't have anything to stop you doing the whole boot camp. So I did like a third of it for free. And he's like, hey, you want to start paying now? And I was like, OK, fine. Um, so I did that boot camp. It was really great. And in the boot camp, I had a mentor who um, was teaching these meetups in DC, because it was an online boot camp, and they wanted to have an in-person um, presence. So he taught these meetups. And he's like, hey, I can help mentor you if you come to the meetups. So I started going to the meetups. He would teach intro stuff and then one day he's like hey I lost my voice can you teach and I was like okay I saw you teach this thing 10 times I'll teach so I just randomly taught and then I started teaching half of them he was doing like three to four meetups a week and I started doing that and then while doing that I got my first tech job at an agency as a WordPress developer I did not know WordPress or PHP they just liked one of my projects I made and they just were like cool you can learn it and I was like okay I guess I can um, and then I started doing Women Who Code because at my boot camp, they're like, hey, you've been teaching. You want to be part of Women Who Code? Because someone who worked there was a director of Women Who Code. So I just happened to be at the right place at the right time. And then again, I wanted to make more money. So I switched to a new job as a software engineer at a retail company, Framebridge, that makes picture frames, like literal frames. And I was doing that. It was fun. But at the same time, I was doing Women Who Code. My mentor left DC. He's like, hey, I'm going to travel the, in, uh, in a van around the country with my family. Do you want to take over the meetup? So I was like, sure. So I taught every Tuesday a free intro to coding boot camp kind of thing for anyone in DC every Tuesday for almost two years. So I was doing that. I was doing Women Who Code. And I was like, I like the teaching and the stuff like that. So I applied for DevRel positions. And that's how I got to Contemple. And so yeah. <laughs> Um, oh, and then also, I'm also known as musical web dev because I really like musicals, not because I have any musical um, talent. Um, and that's why I made this uh, presentation about music because I think it was fun. And Contemple does have a band called Content Types, and they have they have performed at like our all company meetings and stuff, and it's pretty pretty cool. So yeah. Um, so the project we're going to make is. The story is Spotify wrapped. I have a beef with Spotify wrapped <laughs> because if I binge listen to something, then that's my whole Spotify wrapped. So like one year, I listened to Waitress the Musical in January for one week straight. So my whole Spotify wrapped for the whole year was like, you're the top listener of Waitress the Musical. And I had forgotten by the time Spotify wrapped came out that I even listened to Waitress the Musical. So I wanted to make this cute little project where every month you save an album that's your favorite so that you get more of a picture of what you like throughout the year. And I like making little projects like this. So this is what the project looks like live. Um, so it's really simple. This is the homepage. Oh, wait, let me zoom out. There we go. This is the homepage. It has an album, the month that's your favorite, um, the month that you liked it the most. If it's your favorite, it has a little tag, uh, the album name, the year it came out, the, uh, the artist. So these are some albums that I added here. And then if I click on this one, it goes to a page and it has like some tags you can add. So I said this album's hype, it's in English and it's live. And then um, also you can add some text about it. I'm gonna let you guys know I had chat GPT write this text <laughs> for each one because there's too many <laughs> and I didn't feel like it. You can also add pictures and stuff like that. And then also it has uh, some of uh, the next months at the bottom. And this project is made with Next.js and Contemple, and I'm not a React developer, I'm a Vue developer, but Next is really popular, so that's why I said Next. 
Um, so if you have any questions about why the React is written the way it is, I, I don't know. <laughs> Hopefully it's all best practice. Um, okay, so I'm gonna start with a little story time about content and what content management is. And then once that's over, we'll have a little break and then we'll actually get into Contemptful itself. So let's talk a little bit about content. So when you think of content, you might think of social media like YouTube, also this Lizzo NPR, Tiny Desk, you should really watch it, it's really great. Um, but you think of like YouTube, there's so much content on YouTube. You might also think of blogs, so this is dev.2 and medium. And I actually wrote, when I was starting to do the boot camp, I wrote a series of 100 days of code um, blog posts that people still read and it was, I wrote it in 2017. Um, but this is content. And Amazon, all the products on Amazon, that's content. Retail, I used to work at a retail company and we used two C different CMSs to power our website. And Zillow, Zillow, what's this like Zillow, which maybe you might not think of immediately when you think of content. And this is actually a screenshot of DC where I'm from. <laughs> and this place is $2.1 million for three bedrooms and it just makes me feel sad to be a millennial. Um, Cause yeah. Um, also like your Apple Watch, the apps on your Apple Watch, they're getting content from somewhere. And I found this neat little RPG game where you are fighting this rat um, in your Apple Watch. And there's just literally content all over the place. And yeah, content is everywhere. So I tried to find the history of CMSs, but there's no definitive who started content management. Um, but I did find this definition, a CMS is a software used to manage the creation and modification of digital content. And I got it from this super reputable source called Wikipedia. And I put this GIF here because I'm guessing back in the day before CMS, this is what it was like to code for a website. Like all your engineers are trying to do stuff, the marketing people want to write stuff, and it's just trying to gather a bunch of kittens all together and keep them from running around all, the, all over the place. So it's really disorganized. And then somebody came up with CMS. I don't know who it is, <laughs> I can't figure it out, but somebody did. And we've probably all heard of the OG content management system that you think of when you think of content management. Oops, wrong OG, I meant WordPress. Um, so WordPress is a content management system many people have heard of, like most of the web is still built on WordPress and like a lot of big companies like I think CNN or like BBC or something uses WordPress, so like a lot of people still use WordPress. I know a lot of people don't like WordPress because um, I used to be a WordPress dev. And could I get a show of hands of who use, has used WordPress ever? Who, keep your hand up if you like it. Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> um, and so talking about old school CMSs like WordPress, so if you're not familiar with WordPress, it's a content management system where you can spin it up really easy. It comes with the front end. It has the front end for you. you. It has an admin area. And it starts out with your content is pages and posts. That's how basically it starts out. And you can customize it, but it's not that easy. And you have to know PHP to do it. And a lot of people don't like PHP. It's not as cool as JavaScript. Um, so some stuff I had to do as a WordPress dev when I, work, I was working on a project. I have to set up the server and database, do all that kind of stuff. I like that. I'm a front end dev. I like the, uh, the styling and all that kind of stuff. I have to maintain the CMS, keep it up to date. WordPress updated so much all the time and it'll be breaking changes. PHP would also update and it'd be breaking changes and you have to fix your custom plugins and all that. And I also didn't like that. Um, and then I had to do a lot of DNS stuff and traffic and all that kind of stuff. And like I just said, I like CSS. So I didn't like that. Um, and then other stuff I had to do was I had to help clients update their websites, help train them to use it um, on their own, which is a really positive thing in WordPress. It's easy for people who aren't devs to add content. And I actually like that part of, of it. Um, and so WordPress was king and some people came about, again, could not find the actual people who started this, but they came about and made it headless CMS which means that you, it provides the admin part for you and you provide whatever front end you want. So you don't have to use PHP, you can use React, Vue, Angular, whatever you wanna use and that's what Headless is and that's how C, uh, Contentful came about. So in 20, I think 13 or 14, the creators of Contentful were looking for a CMS that you can use the content on mobile apps. Cause back then they didn't have a CMS that did that well so they created Contemple. And you can use literally any programming language you want with Contemple. 
and it's like a blank slate. So when you open it, there's literally nothing, <laughs> which some people hate because they're like, well, what am I supposed to do? But uh, it, it's not like WordPress where you have to undo the pages and post them. You just do whatever you want, organize it however you want, use whatever programming language you want. And that's what Headless is. So Contentful is a headless content management platform. Um, so Contentful, Composable, Content Management Platform, Headless, et cetera. Um, you, uh, our theme is you use structured content on any platform. So you put in your content in the web app and you can use it on a billboard, you can use it on an Apple Watch, you can use it on mobile app, website, and it's all, uh, the results are all in JSON so that you can use it on every platform. So like WordPress, in the WYSIWYG, you could put anything in there, including HTML. Once you put HTML, now you can't use it in the iPhone app. Or I don't know what billboards you use, but you can't use it there. So um, the whole point of Contentful is that you can put your content in here, use it anywhere, and you also need to structure your content, but you decide how you want to structure it. Um, we also have a lot of open source tools. Our APIs are all open source. So if you find a bug, you can open an issue and hopefully <laughs> somebody will look at it. <laughs> um, we also have like a design system you can use if you want to customize Contentful and make your customizations look like Contentful. You can use our design system. And a lot of our tools are open source so that you can customize Contentful to do what you want it to do. Um, oh yeah, so you can customize everything. I put an asterisk because you can't customize like literally everything, but it's almost everything you can customize. Because um, when you tell a dev you can customize everything, they're like, oh really? <laughs> Let's see if you can. Um, and then we also have a lot of APIs that you can use. So we're like, uh, I think originally our tagline was like API first content, headless content management platform. Um, so yeah, that's Contentful in a nutshell. Um, so a little bit more detail of what we have at Contentful. So this is an example of what the JSON response would look like. So if you had an entry that was like a blog post and you had a title field in there and the text said Beyonce for president, uh, this en-us is localization. So if you uh, want to translate your, your website, the en.us would be English and you can have fr, fr for French, et cetera. Um, and then the body, you can have text here. So this is kind of what the content looks like. So it's just really simple JSON that's really easy to consume in whatever language you want it to be consumed in. And then I'm going to go over some of our APIs. We will use two of them today. So the first one we have is our content delivery API. This will give you um, content that's published. So if somebody goes in, they make an entry and they publish it, you will get all that content in the content delivery API. And it's read only, so if somebody gets your API key, it's okay. Um, that's the API key you would use to like display your content. Um, and you can use it REST API or GraphQL um, with that API. And then we also have a content preview API, which is exactly the same, but it only shows draft. So if you wanna have something set up where you have like marketing people putting in copy or making pages, they can see a preview before it's published if you use the preview API. Um, and then we have the content management API. This is like the one where you, if your API key gets out, that's bad. Because you can delete users, delete everything, edit your account. Um, so that one, you don't want the API to get out, but that's how you edit, uh, delete content, migrate content into Contentful, migrate it out, stuff like that. And then uh, we have GraphQL API as well as REST. So the content delivery, which is published, and the content preview, which is draft, you could also use GraphQL with that. And we have a few more APIs, but I really like our images one. I think it's pretty cool because you can like crop images, change the format, uh, change the size, add a border, padding. You can do a lot of really cool stuff just via the API with the images API. So those are some of our APIs. And I just wanted to put this here because we have a lot of them. Um, okay, so I'm going to show some examples of what people use Contemple with. So this is like a typical client, like this is Clover, which is a payment processing company, and they use Contentful for their like marketing website. So it's like a typical client where the content here on their website is in Contentful somehow, and they've organized it however they want to organize it. There's no specific way. I mean, we do have best practices, but they could literally do whatever they want. Um, so this is an example probably of like most of our clients are doing. Um, and then um, another client we have is Sticker Mural, and they're using Contemple for their blog. 
And I thought these stickers were really cute, so that's why I picked this page. Um, but they're using Contemple for their blog, which is probably another really popular, typical um, use of Contemple. And again, there, if like Clover and Sticker Mule both have blogs, the content structure might be completely different based on what they want. Um, and then also, I thought one was really cool. We did, some, we did uh, something with Eurovision in 2021 when they did a live uh, broadcast. So that's pretty cool. So we have like some clients that are really out there and interesting, and some of them are just kind of boring, but that's, <laughs> that's typically what you get. Um, and then I'm gonna show some of my projects because they're more fun. Um, so I really like musicals. So I made this website called Theater Log to track all the musicals I've seen since 2008. And this was my first Contemptful project. So in DevRel, in an, your onboarding, in your first month, you make a project. So I made this project with Contemptful. So all this is coming from Contemptful. So there's like a little card for each show, and then how much I paid, how many times I've seen it, this links to a favorite song, et cetera. And I originally already had this project before I started Contemptful, but my data was just in a JavaScript file. So I had to migrate my data into Contemple, and it, was, it took like five minutes. It was really quick and easy, because that's, that's how it works. <laughs> um, and another project I did is I made a periodic table of Broadway musicals. <laughs> so as like all my, pro I have like 10 Broadway projects. Um, so like the shows, Girl Power shows, Legally Blonde, Wicked, et cetera. And this is all in Contemple. Um, and this one was not as easy as the other one because there are no APIs for theater, so I had to manually add 118 shows <laughs> into it. But um, if there's an API or you have the data already, then it's pretty simple. And one other project I want to talk about is this is a community member, so somebody who uses Contemplal for their personal projects or in work, and he made a site that shows all the Lego Legos that him and his family have built. So like these are all the things his family has built with Legos, and like this is his family at the bottom. And he made, this project is built with Gatsby and Contemplal. Um, and he actually is part of our writing program where we have people write blog posts for us. So we sent him these, these little minifig, custom minifigs. So I thought that was really cute. Um, but yeah, so people use them for like serious stuff, like marketing website for actual company that makes money, or to track your Legos that you built. Um, it's a really versatile um, platform. And um, one other place, if you want to see more examples, is on our website we have a section for like clients and like case studies, but it's kind of a little boring because it's marketing websites and stuff like that. But we also have a developer showcase, which um, Contemple or the DevRel team created. And people have made different apps you can install, they've made projects, they've made um, blog posts, videos about Contemple, and these are just regular developers, not company. Um, so it's like a good place to like get some ideas of like how to make things, what people make, stuff like that. And you can also submit things you've made. Not the project we do today, because I made that. But <laughs> if you make something else, uh, feel free to submit it to the Contemple Developer Showcase. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna take a little break. Um, and during the break, please make a Contemple account. <laughs> And um, yeah, so I'm just gonna do like a five minute break really quick. And um, No problem, no problem. Um, nope, I was just doing like a story time about content and stuff, so like now we're gonna start getting into coding if you wanna follow along. Okay, so if you're somebody else, you're gonna have to pay them off over the years. If you're, if you're, if you're, if you're, if you're 
Okay. You can just watch. <laughs> No problem. What? The creator of the internet. Wow. Wow. Oh, it was 1989, huh? Yeah. That's cool to know, because, yeah, I could not find a definitive, and a lot of people were like, it was us, but actually it wasn't us. And yeah, a lot of people, like, stay claim to it, but then it's kind of funny when you, like, actually trace it back to mm -hmm. the actual originator, and then you're just like, oh, yeah, um, the internet's kind of just a giant CMS, <laughs> when you really think about it. Sorry. It stands to reason who actually made it. That's cool. Thanks for that. <laughs> what's, your, what's your name? Andy. Cool. Nice to meet you. You too. Okay, I'm gonna get started again. I'm gonna get started again, everybody. Um, so, if you, oh, I'm gonna get started, everybody. Um, so, if you made your account and you've never made an account before, it should be like empty, like this. If you're on the home tab, I'll just zoom in a little bit. Um, so, in content, so can anyone confirm you're like on this page? as well. Okay, cool. Oh, yeah. Oh. 
Is there anything to click no? <laughs> start from scratch? Yeah, start from scratch. If you click the other one, that's fine as well. Um, but just try to get to this home page if you can. Yes. Um, is oh, okay. Sorry. Just gonna go look at this really quick. Okay, actually you can just click on the content model tab. So if you get an onboarding uh, thing, you can click on the content model tab and it should be like create a content model button or something like that. Okay, cool. Did not know they added a new user flow <laughs> to the thing. Um, so where you are right now is a contentful space. It's similar to like a GitHub repo. It's just like a storage place for your project. And there's like settings you can do, you can add users, things like that. Um, so this is where you build your content model, it's where you add your content, and where you can add apps to customize Contentful. Um, so under the content model tab, this is where we're gonna add the structure for our project. So back to the project, um, we only have a really simple content model, we just have an album Maybe if you're going to make it more complex, you would have artists. Like basically, you want a content type for things that's repeatable. So right now, we just have album. But if you wanted it to all be, you could also add a artist as a content type, because artists could repeat later. Um, but we're just going to do album. So click on design your content model, if you all can see <laughs> that button. Um, and we're gonna call it album. And it's really important that you call it album because the code is expecting it to be called album. So if you call it something else, you're gonna have to update like 50 words in the code base. Yeah. So call it album. And this page right here, the API identifier is what you use for GraphQL, the REST API to target this content type. So the name could be anything, but the API identifier needs to be album. And you can also put a description here if, they, if you have like a lot of them and other people besides the developers will see them, you can say this is for a music album or something like that. So I'm just gonna click on create. And now we're in a section where we can create our content type. And before we start, we're gonna do it manually together, but you can do all this with code. Um, we have a CLI tool where you can run a migration and it'll just migrate all of your content for you or make your content types for you. We're gonna do it manually though, <laughs> so I can explain all the fields, but you don't have to do this in real life. If you have an actual company and you wanna make a content type, you could do it all via code. So uh, let's add the first field. So I'm clicking on adding field on the right hand side. And these are all of our default fields that are already built in Contemplal. And you can customize all these fields yourself. These are all open source, so if you decide we want to change the text field and add something to it, you can do that yourself. We're not gonna do that together because that's a, it's kinda hard, but um, you can do that yourself. But these are our default fields. And you can also add other fields if you want. So we're gonna add a text field. So click on text. And we're going to call this field name. So this is gonna be the name of our album. And uh, just make sure the field ID says name. If you want to make this a different name, that's fine, but field ID should be name. And the text field has different options. You can do short text, which is like titles, names of things. Or you could do long text, which is like not a WYSIWYG, because you can't like bold it and underline, but it's just like a, a, a paragraph, basically. Um, you can also make it a list if you want to, and we'll do that later. And then um, go ahead and click Add and Configure. And now you can customize the field to do, to like, you can add a bunch of validations, you could change the appearance. So what we're gonna do is for the name field, we're going to not change anything on this page, but you can, um, actually no, we're gonna click on this option here. This will say that the name is the entry title. So when you, we'll, you'll see when we make an entry, it lists them all with, by title. So we're gonna say the name of the album will be the title, which makes sense because if we had two Beyonce albums and we made the artist name the title, there'd be two Beyonce's. 
So we're going to go with the entry title. And on this page is also, if you wanted to do localization, which is translating, you could click on this, this uh, option to do that. So if we wanted to have an option to have this field in French and English, you would click the checkbox here. But we're not going to do that. Um, the other thing we're going to do on this page under validation, here you can um, kind of add some validations to help people enter content correctly. So if you, this field is required, you can click on that. If you want people to, um, this is a unique field, so you only want one entry ever with this title, you can click on that. Um, so there's different validations you can choose. Um, we can choose required field here because we need some kind of field that's required. So I'm going to click on required field. And then the other um, tabs, we're not going to do anything with them, but you can have a default value if you want. You can change the appearance. You can make this a URL. Um, you can make it a radio list, stuff like that. You can also add help text. So if you have a lot of fields, it's really, so name is pretty generic, so it might be the album name here so that people can see that it's for the album name. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna go back to the beginning. It needs to be name, uh, entry title, and then everything else is optional that I clicked on. So I'm gonna click on confirm. And I'll just wait to see, is anybody able to do, <laughs> to do it? Okay, cool, cool. So we have like six more to add. <laughs> um, so you can do this, you do this, you can just do your code. I would suggest when you're first starting, go in and manually do it so you can see all the options. But then after that, do it via the CLI. It's very quick. So the next one we're gonna add is text again, but we're gonna do a different type of text. Um, and we're gonna call it slug. So in the project, when I click on one, the URL puts oops, this slug here. Um, so we need that to make the pages. Oops, wrong tab. So I'm going to keep it slug. Everything I'm going to keep the same. Add and configure. And we're going to go straight to the appearance tab here. And we have a default slug here. So if you click on this, now it'll automatically make the slug for you based on the title of the entry. So if you type homecoming the album in the entry, it'll automatically make slug the homecoming. And every time you update the title, it'll change the slug. So, and also you can, if you had more text fields, you can choose a different text field to make it based off of. We're just gonna do the name of the album as the slug. Okay, does that make sense? <laughs> okay, and then confirm that. And just to show you another example that has more words in it, so this Green Day album, see how the slug is bullet, dash, in a Bible? It automatically does that for you when we choose the slug appearance. Cool. So now we're going to do a different type of field. Um, if you scroll down, there's a media field. This is for images, files, videos. And we're going to call this album cover. And we only want to do one file, but you could do multiple files and just make it an array. We're just going to do one file. And add and configure. And there's nothing really we need to change here. Um, just under appearance, there's some options like when you uh, are adding an asset, you can choose to choose an asset that already exists somewhere else to put in here instead of uploading it every time. But we're just going to leave it by default. Yep. Um, for the uh, text field? Oh, you're not at, you're not able to scroll. Oh, also, I forgot to mention David. <laughs> David is here. He's from Contemple as well, and he'll help you if you get stuck. <laughs> Why did you say anything? <laughs> he's, he's not a random guy. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
the file type does matter. Some files do not work, but most files do. So like WebP works. I think AVIF works now. Um, but certain, there's some files that you can't put because of like security. <laughs> like I think you can't do code, like JavaScript file. Um, but in the docs, it lists like all of the allowable um, file types. But for images, I think any image works. Yes. Yes. Um, I don't know exactly what this will do if I do it on an image, but um, you do have like text fields with the image, with the assets. So like you have a title for the asset and you have a description, and a lot of people use the, the description for alt text. So it might be localization for that, um, but I'm not clicking on that. That would, that would make it so complicated if we started doing localization. Um, but we can look at it later to see what it says, but yeah. The, it doesn't automatically read stuff, but we do have an app that will read the, read the image and make tags for it and all kinds of stuff, um, but not automatically. Did you figure out your scroll? I did, uh, okay. I'm not that wrong, so. Oh. <laughs> cool. So we should have name, slug, album, cover. And the next one we're going to add is release year. So we're going to click on the number one. I basically tried to make it so we use every type of field. Um, so this is the release year of the album. And for number, you can do integer or you could do decimal. We're gonna keep it at integer. And again, you don't need to ch change any options if you don't want to, but a cool thing about the number field is you can have a rating by default, which I think is really nice because I made up my own rating for another project. I was like, man, if I could just have this automatically, that would have been cool. Um, and normally you probably put help text on every field, <laughs> but we're, we're not gonna do that. You don't have to do that. So you should have four fields here. And let me know if I'm going too fast. Okay. The next one we're gonna add is our last text field, which is the artist name. And just make sure your field ID matches um, what I have and go ahead and add and configure, and you can just immediately confirm. Now we have four more, and that's it. And by the way, you can have a maximum, I think, 50 fields per content type, and you might think that's a lot. People, people have that, people have that. Our Contentful website, we use Contentful to power the Contentful website, and our content types, it's really complex. <laughs> Um, the next one's gonna be favorite month. So the month that you're like saying January is, Beyonce's album is my favorite in January. So that's what this field is gonna be. So click on date and time, and it's gonna be favorite month. And make sure you spell favorite right. Okay. Um, and for this one, all we're going to do is under appearance, you can decide what date format you want. So we only want the date. We don't want the time. And you can do time with time zone, time without time zone. We just want the date. So I'm going to switch it to that. I think it might work if you leave it, but maybe don't leave it. <laughs> and confirm. And then we're going to add uh, where is it? rich text field. It's the first one. <coughs> And I called this thought, so this would just be like, I went to the Beyonce concert and it was really awesome. Or, I don't know, Green Day was my first concert that I went to. Um, this is a field that's very similar to the WordPress WYSIWYG, except you can't just put random stuff in here. <laughs> it's like really structured. And uh, when t once you press configure, it actually allows you to decide what you want people to put in here. So like for instance, you probably want to turn off H1 because you don't want there to be multiple H1s on your page. So you probably turn that off if there are like copywriters writing stuff in here. Um, you could also embed other entries in here. So you might want to turn that off if you don't have like the styling for that. So you can kind of control it a little bit. Um, and in this one, what we're going to do under validation is um, limit the number of entries that you can link. 
um, because we're going to use GraphQL, and if you just leave it, it will it will um, try to like look for like a thousand entries. Um, so we wanted to say maximum ten. And I'll explain later. There's a thing called complexity limits in GraphQL, and if you don't limit things, you'll hit the complexity complexity limit, and your request won't work. So I'm just going to click limit number of entries to maximum ten, and then I'm just going to do that for all these that have a limit. So embedded assets, so like basically what will happen is nobody can add more than 10 assets to this rich text field. So you should add it for embedded inline entry, link to asset, embedded asset, embedded block entry, and uh, link to entry. And just put the 10 in the max uh, box. It doesn't matter what number you put, actually, but. And <laughs> you can confirm that. <laughs> I wonder what's going on over there. Um, OK. OK. Two more. And this part is the part we need to go slow, because if you don't get this right, it's not going to work <laughs> for you. Um, so we only have two more. Um, so I'm going to do text again, but we're going to do a different type of text. Category. So for this one, on the each of the albums, I put like, if it's in English, if it's a live album, because I really like live albums, or like this Selena album is in Spanish, so I put Spanish. Um, let me give you some more examples, because it's kind of hard to think of them. Hype, I think I have chill. Just whatever kind of thing you want, because you're going to have to make a list. This is why I'm telling you <laughs> some examples. Um, so under here, we're going to choose list this time. So this will allow you to put multiple values under the same field, and it'll make it an array. So I'm going to add a configure. And under appearance, you can choose if it's going to be like a tag, or if you want it to make it a list where you like enter it, press enter, and it shows up. Or you can make it a checkbox. So I'm going to make it a checkbox so I can see all the ones that are listed. And under validation, I'm going to choose accept only specified values. And here's where I'm going to add like chill, English, Spanish, hype, live, and press enter to, um, to add it. So just whatever albums you like, angsty, old, <laughs> um, just whatever values you think you might want to use later. And then these, these will show up as the check, check boxes. And you can add whatever you like. And I'm going to click Confirm. And again, that's settings, validation, and then accept only specified values. And you can only put like one if you want. You don't have to put a bunch. And you can always come back and add more. And the last field is Boolean. And it's just um, favorite. So this is where you can mark if an album's your ultimate favorite. And I'll add a little stamp that I made. Make sure to spell favorite right. <laughs> Hopefully I spelled favorite right everywhere, because that would be interesting. Um, and we don't really need to do anything. This is Boolean, so you can choose yes or no. The, I'll just let you know under appearance, you can change if this says true or false, or whatever you want it to say. We can just leave it as yes or no. And I'm going to confirm that. So I'm going to let us have a break and let me or David know if you need more time or need me to go over another one. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Do you need? OK. OK. Uh, David, can you help her right here in the front? Anyone else? Yeah. <laughs> Did you have a question? Yes. So for the category? Under validation, 
check accept only specified values and then type whatever you want, press enter. And just any, whatever albums you like, any vibe that you want to put in there. Also, if you think you're good, but you want to check, if you go to this um, link right here, it takes you to the README, and it lists, like I'm looking at the README on my iPad. <laughs> it lists every single step, every single thing, all the validations you need for everything. So if you miss something, you could just watch, and then the README has everything. So if you miss something, it's definitely there. And step, I think, two is where it lists all the fields. Does anybody need a little bit more time? You can't, so you have to delete it. Yeah. Release year is a number, yeah. But actually, it could be a text because I just printed out, so it doesn't matter. But yeah, but make it a number just in case. <laughs> So the question is, say he made a content type and he wants to add new fields to it. Yeah. Are there best practices on what to do? Yeah, like for example, like I would like to like would it automatically bring up like an empty reference? Nope. So, so you have to do that. Okay. But we do have a couple of apps that help you. So there's an app that like if you want to merge content types, it'll help you out. Um, there's an app if you want to like use a content type as a template, so you don't want to completely copy it, but you just want to use parts of it, but you basically have to tell it what you want it to do. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Yep, we were going to go to that, but we can't because <laughs> we're here. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, um, I, was, I wish I was able to reschedule my time for your later class. I mean, they won't just let you come in. I don't know. Can you be like, I'm helping? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know. Um, I wish I could, but it, I, I might have to ask them. Yeah. But um, I, love, I love your class. I'm also from D.C. I'm from oh, Maryland. nice. Uh, Kento, um, where are you from? D.C. Well, I'm not from D.C. I just live there. I live in? Yeah. Okay. yeah. And um, I would like to connect with you. Yeah, yeah. You know, so I got to leave so early and I don't have the time to do that. Are you uh, on LinkedIn? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mostly like to get on Twitter. But, uh, what's your name? Uh, Brittany, B-R-I-T-T-A-N-Y, Walker. And maybe if you search contemple, and then my hair is completely different. <laughs> ah, I see. And the hair. From like 2015. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Gotcha. All right, I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you for coming. Does anyone else need help? Yeah, you don't you don't have to put anything in minimum, just the max. Yeah, you don't have to.
Yeah, um, there is a free account. It just has limits. Like you have 2 million API requests, or it might be 4 million. We just changed it. You have 20 content types max. So you could do a lot with the free plan. And then once you start hitting limits, we'll be like, hey, <laughs> you want to start paying? <laughs> but yeah, you can start off free. So I have a lot of free projects on there right now. Oh, nice, nice. Does anyone need help setting up the fields? Is everyone good? <laughs> Hello. Is everyone good with fields now? Anyone need? OK, cool. Um, so I'm going to show you how to do it, not manually. <laughs> but we're, don't do it. I'm just going to talk about it. So in the readme for the project, um, so like typically when we do a starter project, we already made the content model. So instead of making people manually do it, we have a script that you can run that if we export the content model, you could just import it. So this is an example of one. So you would run this script. Uh, you have every space has an ID, which I'll show you later. And then you use that API token. I said don't share with anybody ever because you could delete everything in your account. But that's the API token you use. And you will, you will uh, run a script that will grab the export. So I exported the whole space and you would run a script that will import this. So you can see here it has slug. Type slug. Here's album cover. Here's release year. Here's, let me go to one, here's the rich text field. So import all that for you. So instead of us taking, I don't know how long it took us, 15 minutes, it would take uh, the one minute <laughs> to import the content model. And you can also do that with content as well. Um, so if you want to try it, you can do it with the project. Um, you could delete your album content model, not right now, <laughs> later, and then try to Im import it again. Um, and again, on the README, it has all the stuff in here. It has literally every single step, like step by step by step. So if you miss something, it's in the README. Um, so you don't have to worry about missing a step. OK. Oh, the README, if you go to this link, this uh, render dash workshop link. ctfl.io slash render workshop that has the readme. So everything I say should be in there. <laughs> um, nope. Um, that I, um, I wonder if it's still my history. Let me go to the docs and show you. Um, actually, I'll go to the. So that's using the Contentful CLI. And let's see if there's. Here we go. Oh, I wanted to go to the real docs, not the. <laughs> OK. OK, so this is an example of what it would look like. So you have to install the CLI, and then you do Contentful login, and it'll connect to your Contentful account. 
and then you would do contentful space export and then tell it what file you want to export it to. And you can say only export content model, only export these entries that have this value in this field. You can get really complex with it. And then you also do contentful space import and then import whatever you want to import. Um, so you just do npm install our CLI and then you can quickly do that. What do you mean? Like, uh, when they use the display of the content that we want to make the analysis on, is that just a CSV file and we can't import the CSV from it? Um, David, do you know? We So the answer is you have to write your own custom script. I think we do have tools though. We have something for CSV for sure. So I think we might have built some libraries for you to do that so you don't have to go from scratch. Um, but yeah, so this is also the tool you would use if you want to do migrations. Like say you have all your data in WordPress and you export it to something and you want to migrate it to Contemple, you can use a CLI to do that which is how I did, how I got my data from my theater log, which was a JavaScript file, into Contemple. Okay, so we have our um, content model. Hopefully, at least some of you <laughs> have it correct. <laughs> um, so now we're going to add some actual content. And again, everything we're doing, you can do it with code. <laughs> we're just gonna do it manually because it's easier to learn that way. Um, so make sure to click save for your content model. <laughs> Don't close it. It should prompt you, I think, when you try to leave. Okay, cool. Cool. It's a little, it's a little foolproof. <laughs> so you should just have just singular album, but most websites have like, well, on the free plan you have maximum 20 content types, but most, a lot of places have like a ton of content types. And you can organize it however you want. People constantly ask us like, if I make a blog, what should my content type be? could be whatever you want, it, which is not a great answer. <laughs> but um, that's, that's the answer we have. Um, so if you click on the content tab, this is where you will add your content. And it should have nothing. So if you click on add entry, now you're in the entry editor. So this is where you edit your content. So this could be a page. If you have a page content type, it could just be a header. It could just be an author content type. Um, so all of our fields are here. So the name one is here, slug is here, album cover, all of them are here. And so we're gonna add an entry together and then you're gonna add your own entry later. Um, and also you can see since the name field is required, on the right the publish uh, button is grayed out. So if you have required fields and they're not filled out, it won't let you publish. So what I would like y'all to do is go to LastFM, because this is the easiest way. <laughs> go to LastFM.com and search for an album. Don't take forever, just pick, <laughs> just pick any random album and go to the um, album page. So I'm just gonna do Beyonce Homecoming. And the reason why I pick this is because it has all, every single data point on this page. So it has the artist name, the album title, it has the image, it has the release here. So those are the things you need. Um, so just pick any album that you want. And I'm gonna put, I'm just gonna copy the album name from Last FM and paste it into my name field. And you can see the slug change to the name of the album, by the way, automatically. Yeah, so just go to Last FM, pick any album, and then um, I just copied the album name. And then in my Contemple um, entry, I pasted in the name of the album. You could type it in there if you want to, um, but that's how I'm gonna fill it out so it doesn't take forever. Um, for the image, there's a couple of different ways you can do it. So if you click on Add Media, we need to add new media because we don't have any existing media. So I'm gonna click on 
add new media. It's going to open another tab. Now we're in an asset. So we're in a diff. You can see how it's like kind of staggered on the side right here. So we're on a different, we're down a level now. We're making a new asset. So it's kind of a new entry. And here you can just put whatever title you want. Like I'm going to put Beyonce homecoming album. But this text is for you inside of Contemple. So when you look at your assets list, this is the title you'll see. So this is internal facing. And then here's where people usually use the description for alt text. So if you want to do alt text for this, like uh, it could be the same thing basically. And then in your project, you can grab the description as your alt text. Oh, spelled Beyonce wrong. And then under file, if you click open file selector, there's a couple, there's actually a lot of different ways you can put files in here. So you can drag and drop. So you can download that image, drag and drop it, put it in here. You can copy the link of the image and paste it here. You can search the web. I don't know who's using Facebook, but um, you can <laughs> grab the image from lots of different places. So the easiest way I would say is for this is to right click on the image, copy link address. I'm on Chrome, so this is copy link address, but you know, whatever your browser says for copying the link of the image. So I just copy the link address of the album and then go back to Contemple, click on the link here on the side and paste the image. And then if you click on this link here, it will download the image for you. If it works. Might be the internet. Yeah, we're all trying to do it the same, yeah. I'm also going to download and see if it goes faster. Okay, let me try. Okay, it might um, be faster if you download the image. Was anybody able to get the image to show up? Yeah, I think you might have to download it because we're all trying to do it at the same exact time. Um, so just right click, save image as, and then click on the, uh, the my device and then get the image from your computer. Yeah, so by default, if you, so he's asking, he added localization to one of the fields, right? And it's blank. <laughs> it didn't automatically translate it to German for him. And by default, it doesn't automatically translate. Like everyone probably was manually translating, but we do have an app that you can add, and I'll go over apps later, that will automatically translate. And we have, actually, we have multiple translation apps. So you would add the app and then Probably it would add something in the sidebar where you say, please translate these fields. It's immediate. Um, nope. I think so. I think for those apps, there's not, but one of them might have like more services, but yeah. Was everyone able to get a image to show up in their thing? Cool, okay. And then also a cool thing about this is you can like edit the image in here, which I think is pretty cool. Um, you can crop it and stuff like that. So anyway, okay, so we're in the asset. It says draft over here. So we're draft, we haven't published it. So for this image to show up, we have to publish it. <laughs> so click on publish. 
And then you're going to want to click on this back arrow to go back to our entry. Because we were technically in another entry for the asset. Publish the, it doesn't matter if you publish either one, but publish the asset for sure, because otherwise it won't show up. Right now, if you publish, nothing will happen because you're not connected to a project yet. Um, and it'll say published in here, and if it's not published, it'll say draft. Yes. Uh, David can help you. We're going to do another entry alone, so like we'll have time to help each of you. Um, and then the, the rest of it, just fill it out from your last FM. So release year for me is 2019. Artist name is Beyonce. <laughs> so you're, it should say the release year in last FM. Some albums don't have all the info. Just make up a year <laughs> or something. And then um, for favorite months, just pick a month and pick any date. I have it set up where it just shows the month, so it doesn't matter what date. So I'm just going to pick March. What is that? Um, so the project is like to, s to track your favorite album each month. So you're saying Beyonce was my favorite in March. Yeah. And then other thoughts, I'll just put best live album ever. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> um, here's where you can like bold things, you can italicize things, underline. I don't know if I put the styling for every single option in here. So if you pick some like superscript, I'm not sure if it's gonna be superscript, but this is where you can do superscript and stuff like that. You can add bullet points. So it's very similar to the WordPress WYSIWYG, but more restricted. And you can use the content on any platform. It's not like if people people could put HTML and WordPress, and that makes it not uh, usable in every context. Um, and then you can also embed other entries here, um, but we're not going to do that. But you could put like another image here. You can link to another entry here, stuff like that. And then under category, you should have a list of the ones you put in the validation. Um, so I would just pick a couple so it shows up. And then you can mark if it's a favorite album or not. And that should be all of the fields. So I would also like you to make one yourself. <laughs> So if you click on the, so a couple ways you can make a new entry is in the top right, there's these three dots that now I'm realizing are really small and kind of hard to see. Um, yes, publish it. Um, and you can create new album from here. You can duplicate also as well. Or you can click on the content tab and click add entry. So make another entry on your own for whatever album you want to add. I'm just going to cheat and duplicate this album. <laughs> and raise your hand if you need help with anything. We'll, OK, we'll take like a 10 minute break to help you guys out. I just have a weird problem. Mm -hmm. Should I go last FM? Mm -hmm. oh. oh. Okay, well, you just say, like, Wikipedia or just Google. Cool. That's why. weird. I get it on my phone, but I'm blocked on my browser. Oh, I'm going to try weird. clearing my tag on my page. Yeah, you don't have to use it last time. It's just an okay. easy place to get the info. Okay. So, like, Wikipedia album. Yeah, and just, you just need the album info, basically. Um, oh, so like if you go back to your content model. Do I save this or oh, you can just leave it. It'll save automatically. And go to the album. And then click on category. Uh, so, sorry, settings. And then click validation. Okay, go to appearance. And change the appearance to checkbox. 
and then confirm, and then save. Uh, sure. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, go ahead and exit it. And then go to content. And now when you go back to that entry, and scroll down, it should have, now you can click one of those. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And then, nope. Like the, the categories at the bottom, you can make that look like tags, basically, yeah. So go ahead and make a new entry as well, after you publish this. And you can click on add entry, add uh, album. Yeah. And then just add whatever other one you want to add. So, uh, go ahead and click on the, um, the, yeah, and go to, click on the media tab at the top, and click add asset, and do single, and try to add it this way instead. Um, I can look at it and see. Will <laughs> 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 we be adding all the albums the same year? Probably. Um, it doesn't matter. Okay. I just I'm just looking at the month. Okay. Bet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, it worked. <laughs> this worked. I don't know Sweet. Why it's so. To <laughs> <laughs> um, so publish that, and then you need to go back to your entry and choose that asset. Um, so click on the content tab. At the yep, it saved it. When it's, it's green, it's good. And click on swimming, and then, oh my gosh, just exit that. It's like a new user thing. So click on, oh sorry, um, where it says album cover, mm -hmm. click on the three dots next to it, yeah, and remove that. So that's the one you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. And yeah. under add media, do, click on it, and do existing media. That's the one that I already uh, downloaded. So now you can, yep. Uh, there you go. Yeah. All from this album um, or you can add different albums. You can do a song if you want, but just add at least one other one. Okay, and then I'm gonna finish this and then ask you another question. That's right. Okay. Brittany. Thank you. So for the name, you just want to put the name of the album. Okay. What is what is slug what is what is so slug me? I don't even know what that is. It's like for the uh, you know a URL <laughs> has like slash something something, uh -huh. but if you go to your content model, it'll uh, it can do it for you automatically. So you click on album, click on settings for your slug, go to appearance, and click on slug at the end, mm -hmm. and then scroll down to the and click confirm, and then click save in the top right. So now if you go back to your content tab and click on the album and then X out of that. Now type the album name again. Uh, no, um, in the, the first, yeah. Delete, delete that, type it again. Oh, it's supposed to automatically do it. What the heck? <laughs> it could be because I just grabbed this URL yeah. right here. Maybe it's a little confused. I yeah. guess go back and just put purple without the exclamation point and the slug. Okay. And lowercase. No, uh, in you well, it doesn't matter. Go ahead. And put the same in the slug. Put the same in the slug right here. Yeah. And then scroll down. Keep going a little bit more. Okay, go back to your content model. Click on album and delete the album cover one. So click on the three dots. Yeah. Click on that. Click, uh, so you have to click on disable and response first. So basically, if other people were in here, it won't let them edit because you're about to, ed to delete it. So you click on save in the top right corner. And now you can delete it after it saves. And why are we doing this? Because you did the wrong type. <laughs> um, and then click add field. Uh, media this time, and then album cover again, and then add and configure, 
Oh, uh, X out of this, and then just refresh. There you go. It did it right now. Okay, now add field, album cover, and then add and configure. And then you can confirm. You don't have to do anything. And then save your content type. And then go back to content. And now you can add the album cover as an image. Does that really show up every time you? <laughs> okay, yeah. So go back to the content type or the content purple, yeah. And then that is so annoying. Okay, <laughs> and scroll down to the bottom and add media existing, and then add that one, yeah. And then for the rest, for release year, just put the year the album came out. Um, for favorite, click yes or no. And you just repeat this process again, but just with another album. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Um, go back to your content model. The content model tab at the top. Nope, it automatically saves. Are you sure? Yeah. It says last save to two seconds. <laughs> and then click on uh, the content model. And then um, click on category settings. Do uh, click on validation real quick. Um, click accept only specified values at the bottom. And type in a few things like chill, hype, you know, things you might like about an album. Yeah. Like R and B or whatever you want to put. Okay, that's enough. <laughs> and then confirm. Uh, oh, sorry, there's another thing. Click settings, click on appearance at the end, and click, uh, drop down. Um, yeah, drop down is. And then save. And now when you go back, you can choose. This was an auto save. No. But if you try to leave, it'll say, hey, <laughs> you didn't save it. <laughs> And then go to content tab again, click on the album, and it should have those options now. So now you can choose one of those. Yeah. Do I follow the same steps that we did when we made all those? Uh, all the fields? Yeah. Nope. You just have to click those three dots in the top right. On the top yep. Right. Uh, uh, right below settings, there's, yep, a create new album. And now you just enter whatever album you want in here. So it already had everything that I set up yep. already has it. Mm -hmm. Yep. Interesting. Yeah. Very dope. Before I add more entries, is, it, is everything okay on this side? Click on the... the Name and description. Oh no! Like click on click on that. Click on the tab where it says fields. Click on name and description real quick. Uh, that's fine. You can do you can do whatever. Uh, click on fields again. Uh, click on the three dots next to save. Do duplicate and put. Um, API identifier. No, um, in, yeah. put album, lowercase a. And then um, under name, put album, I guess. Yeah. And then uh, duplicate. So you're going to have to redo your album because before your, um, yeah, go ahead with that. Uh, save changes. Because before your um, API was your name, but in the code it's going to be album. So you would have to update your <laughs> album like 50 times. So instead, I just you just copied it. So you just make the entry again. So go to content. Um, click on uh, the content tab. Yeah, and then add entry, and just make sure you're adding album. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So it's all synced. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. So 
how does this translate into more code? Like we, don't, we haven't got there yet. Okay. Yeah. So just add more entries and then we'll... Yeah, yeah, okay. And do a lot of front-end developers like to use consent yeah. content? Or yeah, it's super easy. Because yeah. I'm front-end. I don't like the back-end. So it's really easy. And if, yeah, so do I have to pay for this platform nope. if I want to do that? Um, it depends on what, if you want to use it for your company and you're going to have like 4 million API requests a month, yeah, you're going to have to pay. But if you want it for your, per your portfolio yeah. or a side project, no. Yeah. This is dope. And they tell you only to put one project in a space, but I have like five projects in a space. <laughs> now, when I go, like, after this weekend, if I want to revisit everything again, do you guys have like, stuff online that is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll go, I go over resources at the end, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah nice to meet you. Thank you. Yeah. Does anyone else need any help? Cool. Cool. Is everybody able to add at least two entries? Okay, cool. So manually adding stuff kind of time consuming. I don't know if you guys noticed how it was kind of time consuming copy and paste from last FM and I did it 12 times for this. Um, and uh, it's really, it's really time consuming. So we have this thing called the app framework where you can build apps to do all that work for you. So, but we did everything manual today, but everything I showed, you could do it with code, you could do it way faster. Um, so we have this thing called the App Framework, where you can build apps. It's kind of similar to WordPress plugins, where you can build things that people can install, other people can install, you can install just for your organization, and you can do pretty much anything you want to do with asterisk, because it's not completely everything, but like a lot, you could do a lot of stuff. Like uh, one person made a March Madness app where they can, you could pick a draft in Contentful and build your draft and stuff. Um, and then people do other useful stuff <laughs> in there as well. Um, you can also customize Contentful. So the way that Contentful looked, if you have a company, you're like, we want Contentful to look like our company's brand, you can change the, how it looks to look like your company brand. Um, and then you can also use apps to connect to other services and APIs. So like Last.fm has an API, we could have made an app to connect so that you just search for the album and then click it and it'll fill out everything. So I'm going to show you some of our apps. So we have, uh, let me just go. So we have this marketplace that has all of the apps contentful, either built or like our partners built that we approve of. <laughs> and then also random developers made apps and they put them in GitHub and you can click a button and install it. You just, you know, it's a random person, so be careful. <laughs> um, so we have like all these types of apps here. We have all these new AI ones. So like uh, this one can read your images and tell you what it has in it. This one, can make alt text for you with AI. Um, we have apps for like if you have a store and you make an e-commerce site, usually you have your products in an e-commerce CMS and you use Contentful for your, like your marketing pages and stuff. So if you have Shopify, we have an app that will connect to your Shopify, import your product data into, into Contentful. Um, so there's like lots of really cool apps and you can make your own and it's not that hard. Um, we have like, we have a create app app like create react app where you just run create i forgot what it's called a contentful app and then bam you have a boilerplate and we have it in react view we have like a i think like 12 different ones so depending on what language you want to use and 
when you're making an app, so I keep saying you can customize everything. You can't customize completely everything, but like that space homepage, um, this page that some of you couldn't see because it was onboarding, you can customize this to say whatever you want. So it could be a dashboard of like, how are our blog posts doing on Google Analytics? Or who has edited what thing? Because you might have 100 people doing stuff and you can't figure out who's doing what. So you can change this whole page to do whatever you want. Um, you can also customize the entry editor. So when you were in an entry, you can change this to do whatever you want. <laughs> um, you can also change, you can add an app to the sidebar. So the sidebar doesn't have to look like this. You can add other stuff here. So there's a, there's like a Google Analytics app where you can see like how this page is doing in Google Analytics if you connect to Google Analytics. Uh, this is where the translation app, once you add it, something will pop up here where it's like what field you want to translate to what language and stuff like that. Um, and then you can also just create a whole new page in Contemple, just completely. You cannot edit the asset though. So this page, you can't edit it. So that's one that people really want to edit, but you can't edit it. Um, but basically you can edit almost everything. Um, and we have a design library where if you want your app to look like Contemple, you can use our design library. So it will look all seamless, but it's your <coughs> custom app. Um, so, for our project, it would be really cool if I made an app where you can search Spotify and just click the album and then it filled out all that stuff for us, but um, it's kind of a lot of work, so I, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't do it. Um, <laughs> and also, you have to have a Spotify account, and I was like, okay, well I can do Apple Music too, but then you have to be an Apple developer and pay $99, and I was like, yeah, we're not going to do that. So unfortunately, I, I couldn't make an app with Spotify or Apple Music, but Last.fm has an API, and we do have a blog post where another dev advocate made an app with Last.fm. Um, so you just search the album, click it, and then you can decide what fields have what. And I will show you one app, though. So to add an app, just click here where it says App, and you can go to our marketplace, or you can make your own app, install it, et cetera. The, an app that I always um, add to every space is the GraphQL Playground. So when using Contemple, I pretty much always use the GraphQL API. And this GraphQL Playground allows for you to write your GraphQL queries, which I'll show you what that means if you don't have any idea what I'm saying, inside of Contemple. So I'm going to install this and authorize access. So every time you install an app, it's going to be like, are you sure <laughs> you want to install this? Please confirm. And oh, no, 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 you don't have to install it. I'm just going to show you. Um, and this page here is a configuration page, which you also can customize. So some apps, you need an API key. So you can have a form here to say, put your API key in here. Or there's a Netlify app, and you have to click a button to connect to your Netlify account. So that's what this page is. So this is a GraphQL playground, and it requires us to put an API key. So we're going to do this all together, but we're going to create our API keys, because we're going to need that for the code later. So if you click on <coughs> settings and go to, oh, I have to zoom out, and click on API keys, this will take you to the area where you can create API keys for your space, which you need to do to get data out of your contemple. So it should say add API key button in the top right. If you click on that, it'll automatically create an API key for you. And you can change the name if you want, but you don't have to. Um, so here I have your space ID, which you'll need a lot if you want to do the Contemple CLI, stuff like that. It also is in your URL up here. So in case you're like somewhere else and you don't feel like coming to this page, you can grab it there. This is the API key, the content delivery API key. This is the API key we'll use in our project to get our data to show up in our project. This is the read-only one that gives you published content. So it's okay if anyone sees it. And then the preview one gives you draft content. Also read only, it's okay if anyone sees it. And you can also decide if you have multiple environments. You can have multiple, you can have a staging environment, main environment, whatever you want. You can decide which environments use your API keys. So I'm just gonna grab this one for the GraphQL API, and we'll use these API keys later. I'm just gonna, oh, I didn't, didn't install. So 
I'm going to install this. You don't have to follow along. I'm just going to show you this app. So I'm installing it. And depending on where the app lives, uh, you might have to click something different. So like if you installed an app that customizes the home page, you don't have to go anywhere. It's just going to go to the home page. It'll be different. Um, for the GraphQL app, it lives here in this list right here. So I click on this. Uh-oh. The rainbow wheel of death. <laughs> yeah. So this app allows you to write queries for your content within Contentful. Um, so I will show you what our project has. But like in here, I have an album collection. So this is saying I want to get all of my albums. And I want to get all the items in my al album collection. Wait, let me zoom. And I want to have the name of the album and the artist name. And that's, that's good enough. And then if I run this, it shows me my output. So here are all my albums uh, with the artist name and Beyonce as the name. So I really like this app because I can build my GraphQL queries inside of Contentful. It's really easy. Uh, I can auto-complete with control space. And these are all my options. So I, have, I can get a singular album. I can get the album collection. I can get a singular asset or asset collection. And for the singular ones, you just have to put the ID of it. Um, so this is, I find this super useful. <laughs> um, so I always add this when I'm, um, when I'm using GraphQL. And this is an example of an app that takes over an entire page. This is a custom page app that actually my, the old DevRel manager of Contemple made this. And you don't have to follow along. I just like this app. It's just an app to help you. It doesn't actually do anything. Um, okay. Okay. So we're finally going to go to the code. <laughs> Um, so uh, again, we're going to hopefully some of you all will be able to run this on your computers. <laughs> um, so if you go to this GitHub repo, and you can fork the repo, you can download the code, just get the project on your computer however you want to get it. If you, um, I'll just wait till you guys get there, but go to this link. If you forked it, then uh, go ahead and clone it to your local right. environment. So, now, anybody got login locked yet? Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.
sorry. Uh, David's coming to help you. Does anybody need more time? Okay. For those of you waiting, um, one thing you can do is make a .env .local file, copy what's in the .env .local example into that file. And it's also in the README if you want to just go ahead. You already got it? Wow, okay. Overachiever. <laughs> but it worked, oh, it worked for somebody, yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes, at least one person. Yeah, that's the next step. I'm so glad. Dave and I were working on it last night at midnight, so <laughs> I'm glad it worked. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and go ahead. I'm going to just duplicate duplicate the dot env dot local. And if you don't know what this, oh, I can't duplicate like that. I just copied it. If you don't know what this file is, this is a file where you put like API keys and secret things that you don't want to put on GitHub. So if I push this to GitHub, it, c it will not push the dot env file. And the make sure to change the uh, name to be just dot env dot local. Or it could be dot env, um, both work. And then inside of this file, you're gonna need to pull your, sorry, the hover thing is really annoying. You need to pull your space ID, your access token, your pre preview access token. So I'm gonna go back to Contemple, settings, API keys. Back to that API key we made before. If you don't have one, click the Add API Key button. And if you already have API keys, you could just make a new one for this project if you want to. And then grab your space ID, copy it, put it in the file. Don't put quotes, don't put anything, just copy it right up against the equal sign. And do the, the access token is your delivery API key. So copy that one. Your preview, preview access token is your content preview API key. And then the preview secret is just a string that you make up. So I'm just gonna put music. Um, you would need this if you wanna set a preview, which we're not gonna do, but I think it's in the readme how to do it. So I'm just gonna put a random string. And we're doing this because we're going to do a few requests to the GraphQL API to get our data, and it needs our space ID and access token. And these right now are variables that we use in our code. Does anyone need more time to make their .env file? So if you've done this, if you go back to your terminal, npm install. Oh, if you don't have node, then I don't know. <laughs> but <it's laughs> you, you need node. Um, 
you can install it real quick. Um, so npm install and then npm run dev. And it should start localhost 3000 unless you have something already running. And if you go to localhost 3000, it should have whatever entries you put. So we'll stop here to try to get people at this to this point. Is anyone successful? Yes, two people, <gasps> three people, yes, okay. Yay, I'm so happy, it works. Um, so raise your hand if you need help getting to this point. Oh, David's coming behind you. Your .env file changed the name. Oh wait. Oh, I put them in the wrong place. No, 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 you didn't. You did the right. Um, have Have you restarted your um, server? No, just end it, and then do npm run dev again. Okay, and then refresh. Uh oh. Uh, if you open DevTools, is there an error in the console? Yes, there's something. Failed to load. Oh, no, that, that has nothing to do with it. It's a Chrome extension. Um, let's look at your content model. Called album. Hmm. Wait, you have. Um. Go back to settings, API. And then click on the show for content delivery, the show, like right above it, the show. CJ, okay. And the like, preview doesn't matter, that one that wouldn't mess up the home page. Huh. And you're in the right like place in your terminal, right? <laughs> um, I put it in. Yeah. Oh, um, Kill your kill your um, server. Check your node version. I just updated that yesterday, I think. <laughs> so it should be. Oh, is it you not? might be one sixteen too low. Like uh. Okay. Okay. It's like sixteen. So it's like sixteen point three. Oh, I need to go, I'm too updated, or no, not you enough? No, you need to go higher. Oh, okay. Go higher. Do you have MVM? Yeah, I, oh, I updated it yesterday, but I did it on my whole, like, separate. Okay, I'll, I'll figure that out. Yeah, just your node has to be a little higher. How do you memorize that? <laughs> I do this way too often. Like, does that look normal? Yes. Okay. And then from there, you'll just do MVM use 18.15. Okay, okay. I did read that on Stack Overflow yesterday, but I was trying to get it on my other one. Yeah. If, they're, if, if they're loading, okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. Alright, so NBM Okay. Sweet. Sounds good. Solve it. Thank you. Thank you. And it also doesn't help that the process
Okay, while we're waiting for people to catch up, I'm going to talk about the code a little bit. Um, but yeah, I'm not a React developer, so I don't know everything that's happening in here. Um, but I want to show you how Contemplful is in the project. So in the um, library folder, there's a lib folder, there's an api.js file. Um, I'm just explaining the code for you guys that are still going. Um, and in here, I have the GraphQL um, attributes. So these are all of the GraphQL thing, the things I pulled from Contemplful via GraphQL. So this sys ID is an ID of the um, entry. Um, and then I'm getting the name of the album, the slug. The album cover is an object that has the URL of the um, image and the description that I said people use for alt text. And then see, it just has all the items listed here. And then for the rich text, you can go into a lot more detail. So I'm getting um, the rich text here. And then I'm also getting any links. So like you can embed an entry, you can embed an asset. I'm getting that data as well. And that's it. So this is the, all the GraphQL fields. And then here we're actually querying the API. So this is, how you, this is an example of how you can get data from the GraphQL API. So we're using the environment variables here. And then I'm getting the response. And then we just have a bunch of functions down here. So like, we're not doing preview, uh, git post with slug. And it's using those GraphQL fields in here. And there's one to get all the posts for the home page. And it's using that GraphQL uh, field. And I also have added filters to sort it by, I think, oldest first. Um, so this, this is how it's requesting the data to put it into the project. Um, and yeah, then the data is just used in the different components. Uh, so it's really, I don't want to say simple because it's not, <laughs> it's not that simple, but it's pretty straightforward, I guess. Um, and this is just one way you can do it. You could do a different way if you like, but this is just an example of how to do it with Next and GraphQL. Um, any questions about it that isn't about React? <laughs> okay, cool. Um, so people were able to get localhost to show the albums that you entered into your contemporary cool. So one other thing I wanted to do is to add a field and show you how to get that data to show up in your contemporary project. So I'm gonna go to my, you can follow if you want, um, I'm going to go to my content model album, and I'm going to add a new field, a uh, text field, called uh, faves songs. And I'm just going to have it be a text field. You don't have to click any other stuff, just text field. Just make sure your field ID is faves. Actually, your field ID can be anything because we're going to add this. So you don't have to do exactly the same as me. It's not already in the code. I'm just going to do fave songs. I'm just going to add it and confirm. You don't need to do any other stuff. So I added fave song. So I'm going to save that. Then I'm going to go to one of my entries. I'll go to Beyonce. And it'll be at the bottom. Also, by the way, just in your content model, if you want to change the order, you can drag them. Um, so I'm going to add, I'm going to say my favorite song in this album is Drunk in Love. And I'm going to publish. Thank you. Yes. I think because not just developers are using it, so the UI allows anybody to add content and manage content. And the develop a good thing about it is developers only have to help the most at the beginning, and then you can be more hands off later. So I think it's definitely the UI and the user experience, because um, yeah, otherwise we wouldn't, we wouldn't need CMSs if we could just grab the stuff from the faster. So. 
Oh, yes. You need a developer because somebody has to do the front end. <laughs> but yes, they can add content. Like it's set up so it's really hard for someone not a developer to mess up your website. Okay. Versus WordPress is really easy to for someone who's not a developer to like mess it up. Because you could just put JavaScript in there or HTML and then mess up a page really easy with the WYSIWYG. But this is set up so that it's more foolproof. So it's e harder for people to mess it up on their own. Um, I wouldn't say it's better than WordPress. It just depends on what you need. Like if your company has PHP developers, then maybe do WordPress. Um, but if you want more flexible, flexible structure, and also if you want your content to be easily usable across multiple platforms, then I would use a headless CMS, probably. But it definitely depends on what you currently have, because some people they come to us and they're like, oh, we want to do this. And I'm like, you should just use WordPress. <laughs> that will be easiest for you. So it just depends. Yeah, there's other, uh, there's Sanity, um, Strappy, High Graph, Storyblock. There's a lot of different ones. And everyone has like a blog starter or something so you can see what the same type of project is like in each one. So I definitely recommend trying them out for each one. They're all pretty similar. Some of them have like a certain feature that the other ones don't. So it might be important for your company. Um, but yeah, I would try them all out and see what's up. I think some of them are more developer friendly than others. So if you're like, we need 100 marketers to be in here, maybe you don't want the one that's super dev friendly because you need one that's more non-dev friendly or something like that. Uh, what do you mean by directory? Yeah, so the question is if you want to create a directory of people, would Contempt will be a good fit? Yeah. Mm -hmm. One thing though is if you want users to enter that data, no. You don't want user inputted data to send to Contemplal. You The data comes from your company. Um, yeah. But if it's you entering it, yeah, it could work. Um, so yeah, I added this fave song field. So now it's in my content model, in my content. So I'm going to go to my code, to the library folder, app api.js and I'm going to add favorite song to my GraphQL query and you need to add the API identifier so I have fave song so whatever you put put here it doesn't matter where somewhere in your GraphQL field so save that and then um, I want it to show up in my project oh this is not my local host I want it to show up in my project, oops, wrong one, <laughs> like on this page, right here. So this uh, component is, under components, it is post header, um, but it's on, it's within the pages folder, post, it's in the slug page. So every one of those pages is in the slug, is built from the slug.js file. So I'm gonna click on slug.js file, and here's my post header. So I need to pass that data from my GraphQL query into the post header. So I'm going to add a prop here that's fave song. And it would be whatever you put your, you called your field. So I'm just making sure the post header has access to the fave song data. And I'm in the slug.js file that's inside of the pages folder. So we added the field to content type. I added the data to one of my entries. We added the field to our API request. And now I'm passing it down to the post header component. And then Within post header, I'm going to 
add Faye's song here, along with all my other. Uh, that's just the name of my folder. Um, post headers inside of components. And then I'm going to add it underneath this UL, music labels UL. I'm going to add a paragraph, class name, favorite song. And I'm going to put fave song here. And if you add this class name, I added some CSS. Um, that will make it look a little fancy. Yes? It's not in a folder. We, yeah, the API.js grabs the data from Contemple. Yeah. So if you add this paragraph to post header and you did everything right, you should see. Uh oh. No, what? You should see the favorite song. Oh, oh, I'm in the wrong. I'm in the wrong album. That's why. Phew. Okay, there it is. You should see the song show up with a little music note. So that's how you would add. Favorite dash song. So that's how you would add something if you wanted to add another field. Um, in the slug.js file, there's a post header component. That's the one where we added the paragraph. And you need to add fave song here. Okay. And then in post header, at the top, you need to add fave song here. Yeah. And then you, it also needs to be in your API.js file somewhere in the GraphQL field. <coughs> Is anybody able to get it to work? Also, it's okay if it doesn't work. It's just an example of how to add it. How to add it. I was like, I should add a little coding, but it's always hard with big groups to add actual. Uh, nope. This the API.js under library. That's the one. Inside of this post GraphQL fields variable, add it anywhere. It doesn't matter where. Yeah. But as long as yours needs to be the same name as mine. <laughs> I don't know if everybody did the same name. Yeah. It works. Yay. Yes, it's in the README. Oh, well, the adding the fave song is not in the README because I just want to just add something to show you. But everything else is in the README. <laughs> So 
So one last thing I wanted to show you all is resources that you could look at that are free to learn more about Contemple. So we have a learning services center where they've built a bunch of courses on how to use Contemple and they have a developer track um, that shows you all the stuff I just said, but way more detail. Um, so if you wanna make an app, oh also if you wanna make an app, David back there made a video course on the app framework video course of Contemple. Let's see if I can find it. Here it is. So it has step-by-step -step on how to create an app with Contemple if you want to make your own app. Um, but the learning services has like how to migrate content, how to do previews, how to do localization, all that stuff. And it's like um, interactive. So it's not just like videos. It's like some videos, some interactive. It quizzes you a little bit. And also, eventually, you can get a certification if you want to. But that's a good place to start. Also, we have this um, Technologies Getting Started page on our website where we have videos we made on if you want to get started with Gatsby, Next.js, React, GraphQL, I think regular JavaScript is one. Um, and then we also have guides for like Remix and Ruby and Angular. And um, so you can pretty much use whatever you want with Contemple. Um, and again, I would definitely recommend checking out the Developers Showcase to see the more fun, less corporate-y things people have made. And also give you an idea of what kind of apps you can make to help yourself do things. Like my old boss had an app that would like find, he would write tutorials and there's certain words you shouldn't put in tutorials like it's easy or simply do this or it's basic. So he had an app that would read his copy to make sure he didn't have those words in it. He had an app that would tell you how long it would take to read his blog posts and stuff like that. So like little things like that that you can make that are really simple. Like even I've made apps even though I don't know React <laughs> and I use the React template. Um, and yeah, so um, I think I have one more slide. So yeah, the, la the last things you can do is add more entries if you want, add all 12 entries. You can change the theme. I use CSS variables, so you can just change the colors real quick if you want to change it up. You can try to add your own fields in there if you're feeling spicy. Um, and yeah, hopefully you try to make something with Contemple. I find it really fun to make little side projects. Um, and yeah, that's, that's, that's it um, for the workshop. <laughs> Thank you. And David and I can answer any questions if you have any. Yes. So you mentioned like for people don't have a full like PhD like because that the content type is like kind of projects. How many projects are you actually like able to like build out of it? So you're supposed to only put one project per space. However, if you're just like doing your portfolio and a blog, you could put them in the same space. Yeah, like that Broadway uh, um, periodic table I made is in the same space as my theater log project because the, the periodic table has one content type. So you have up to 20 for free. So I just put it in the same one. But technically sales is like, you should have one space per project so people will buy spaces. <laughs> but yeah. As long as you don't hit the API limit, so like I think it's four million um, per month, right. then then you can you're good. You guys can move. <laughs> you can. Oh, we have swag in the back, so please take it because I, my suitcase is really heavy. So. Um,